Happy Monday, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to Toys, the Universe, and Everything. This week, we're rushing the front line with Commando for the Atari 7800. So grab some field rations, like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let's fire an unreasonable amount of bullets. Released in 1989 by Sculptured Software, published by Atari, Commando is a game by Capcom that was brought to the United States by Data East at the arcades. Originally released in Japan as Sinjo no Okami, or Wolf of the Battlefield, in 1985. You play as Super Joe, or as the Crack Shot Commando, as Atari named him in the instruction manual. This is a vertical run and gun where you shoot everything that moves with your trusty rifle. Sound-wise, you'll notice this game sounds considerably better than many 7800 games. That is due to the power of the Pokey Chip, Atari's seldom used audio chip upgrade that should have been in every game. At least got the thumbs up for Commando. The tunes in Commando are some of the best on the system, hands down, and it keeps pace nicely with the score of its Nintendo counterpart, even though some effects might seem muted or subtle during gameplay. Visually, the designers did a spectacular job of hiding the 7800's age for this port. The colors are vibrant, the sprites animate well. Even when there's a lot of moving stuff on screen at once, the 7800 handles the action far better than the NES does. The NES version of Commando is an absolute flicker fest compared to the Atari game. No disappearing motorcycles or soldiers here. The gameplay of Commando is top notch. Super Joe is responsive, the hidden bonus rooms are here, and the action is twitchy and relentless. You'll get the hang of positioning Joe to get the angles on your opponents very quickly, but that won't make this game a cakewalk by any means. You'll constantly be re-evaluating your approach as the enemy vehicles come across your path or bullets spray from a gunner's nest. The end level rush sequence is also a great surge of fun and adrenaline at the end of each level. The only gripes I have about Commando seem to be problems with the 7800 itself rather than the game. I have three 7800s in my collection. Each one displays the colors a little differently, and each one also outputs the volume at a different audio level. I know this is an issue with the 7800 and the adjustable pots inside the system, but I only notice it when I play Commando. The other gripe, and this is a biggie, is Commando costs a lot of money and will lead you to spending even more money. Commando requires a two-button controller like the Pro-Line. The Pro-Line stinks. To enjoy this game, you'll be hunting down a different controller solution, whether that be the European 7800 pad, an arcade stick, a Sega controller adapter, a converted NES pad, or a converted plug-and-play Space Invader stick. Yeah, those exist. You'll be seeking other options than the Pro-Line. Playing Commando with the Pro Line is like trying to write an email with your nose. Controller aside, is Commando for 7800 worth the $40 to $100 it goes for these days? Absolutely. This game is easily one of the best on the system, and a great example of what the 7800 could have been if the right developers had been on board, and every game had been allowed to use the Pokey Chip. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review of Commando, and no matter what your questions are about toys, the universe, and everything, remember, the answer is to always have fun. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is using the Proline controller as a door shim. See you next time, everybody. All right, you're part of the way there.